We really should start taking boats and ferries more often. <coughs> We always enjoy finding new ways to see the world and make travel more interesting. That's why we decided to go from Japan to Korea, not by air, not by car, but over water. I'm kidding. We boarded a ferry in Fukuoka, Japan and set sail for Busan, South Korea. But far from everything about this experience would be smooth sailing. Hello guys from Hiroshima, where we are about to board a Shinkansen. And today after tomorrow, we have a really exciting uh, way of mode of travel coming up. Yeah, it's a very rare mode of travel or travel. <laughs> it's a very rare mode of transport between two different countries. So I'm very excited to try it, especially between really? these two countries or traveling to or from it. Tonight we're gonna try to do laundry, maybe tomorrow morning, not sure. Depends on <laughs> how much energy we have. And tomorrow we have a full day here to just see a little bit before Fukuoka, but the day after that is actually one of the most exciting parts of this whole trip, or at least initially for me. So Work. Okay, using Google Translate, touch this label to remove static. There we go. Okay, but this is the coolest thing. Sneaker laundry. So you put your shoes in here, <laughs> you dry them in this. So our shoes were filthy, haven't washed them in ages, and we've never seen a shoe washing machine. Before. It's so cool. The shoes were a complete joke. They came out <laughs> just as dirty as before, just wet. So now we have to dry them. In our Shinkansen video from a few weeks ago, we mentioned that Eastern has sent us their new Chromebook Vero 514, a laptop that embraces sustainability in a way that honestly very little tech does. Many parts of this laptop, from the keyboard to the chassis, are made from recycled plastics that would have otherwise ended up in the ocean. It's super light at only 1.4 kilograms, and of course it runs on Chrome OS, which means super quick startup times and a battery life of up to 10 hours. It also has built-in malware protection that stops viruses in their tracks. And best of all, five of you, that's right, five of you watching have the chance to win one of these Chromebooks by doing your own eco challenge. Whether that is eating more plant-based food, taking your bike instead of your car, all you have to do is to commit to the challenge for 21 days, share it with Acer via the link at the top of the description or tag them on social media. And you're entered to win your very own Acer Chromebook Vero 514. Good luck. Good morning guys, it's a beautiful day in Fukuoka and we're just gonna show you quickly what we get up to today but the main point of the video is of course what we're doing tomorrow. No, we really have to emphasize it's such a nice day here. It's it amazing. It feels so good to still be in Japan even though it's our last day, we're soaking in every second. Yeah. Because this has been such an amazing trip and such so amazing. an amazing country. We always knew we liked Japan but on this trip we've really gotten to understand that we love it <laughs> so much. I don't know why, but I'm getting like Gothenburg vibes from being here, but like Japan style. A little industrial, uh, close to the water, like with the canals and everything. We're heading up this cool structure that is nothing like Gothenburg. I don't know what Oscar is talking about. <laughs> Dan said it feels like Perth, like a Japanese like Perth. Perth We're getting very different vibes from this. Just goes to show that all the impressions you get while traveling of a place are purely subjective. And just because we react to a thing a certain way when we travel in our vlogs, doesn't mean you're gonna react 
times. The same way. Good. Very good. Yeah. Tofu, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it, we're so far south and there's still some cherry blossoms. Today is April 10th and I think this far south, I'm really impressed <laughs> that it's hanging on so long here. We explored Fukuoka on foot for several hours and the highlight was walking through the beautiful Ohori Park. At first I saw this turtle and I was like, oh my god. And then I was like, oh my god. What is this? <laughs> And as always, we walked for hours and hours and hours, and now we're like at the other end of the city. <laughs> so we're, we're also taking at the, the end of our energy. Yeah, we're taking the metro back. Yes. <laughs> From our observations, Fukuoka is by far the chillest city in Japan. <laughs> I've never seen so many people jaywalk, not respect the zebra crossings. A lot fewer people are masking up on the subway. So yeah, there are a bunch of rebels down here in the south apparently. All right guys, good morning from Fukuoka. We're about to head to the, where we're heading, <laughs> to the boat terminal. We're having a bit of trouble figuring out exactly where it is because there seems to be different terminals for different boats. There's no details about where the ship actually leaves from. I hope we're at the right one because we're also a bit unclear when check-in closes, but it'll be fine. We're in Japan. <laughs> All right, we made it here. We think we're at the right place. Although it's pretty deserted, I think that's just because maybe we're the last people here. This is the name, the Hakata Port International Terminal. Look at this awesome little, or huge, not little, uh, loading over here. This is so cool. Oh, you're filling out the QR code. Yeah, yeah, okay. Last second. Wait, are you, did you fill it up? Okay, there's still lots to do. They say they want you to be here at least an hour before departure, but as the rebels we are, we were only here 40 minutes before and we're totally fine. And it's, there's no stress whatsoever. But it says it closes 15 minutes before, so. 15 minutes before. Yeah. So conveniently, they have a currency exchange booth right here. So we're gonna convert our last few thousand uh, yen. I was already saying won. We're converting our yen into won. She gave us the Korean money, but then she left like a few Japanese coins. She was like, for good luck, for good memory from Japan. So adorable. All right, so there's this little departure area. We haven't cleared passport control yet. So I guess we're gonna do that now. I am honestly so excited. Like this was the highlight for me when we were booking the trip. Like I was so excited to do this. All right, so we just passed through uh, immigration or I guess emigration, which is always so cool when you do it, not at an airport. Like to me, it's just so fascinating. <laughs> so fascinating. So yeah, now- <laughs> Traveled around the world for several years and still so fascinated by immigration. It's just funny because it feels like you're at an airport, but you're about to take a boat. And of course, like everything in Japan, this is extremely organized. All right, we're doing it. I counted and I, I'm pretty sure this is our fourth time ever taking boats between two countries. And I think maybe just our third time ever doing it between two non-Schengen countries. Or no, actually, our second time ever. It's not often you take international boat rides. some luggage storage. <laughs> Can we just choose any space? Yeah. Because it doesn't correspond to our seats or anything. Nope. Does this fit yeah. under here? Dripping in sweat. Now we're just standing here docked. But... I can already feel that I really should have taken some motion sickness medicine before this ride. Maybe I should take some now because we're already going up and down. We booked business class on this ride because we wanted to try it out. Here's the economy cabin on the first floor for comparison. The business class cabin was located on the second floor. Heading up to our top deck. I don't know 
know exactly what the concept is, but during check-in, they asked us whether we wanted one of these seats, or two of these seats, or these ones, over here. So, these look fancy as so just... <laughs> I don't know what, really what the difference is. These look smaller, um, and uh, the color is definitely a choice. <laughs> Okay, so there's charging down here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, that looks really comfortable. And it's like a bit silent. Soundproof, yeah. Okay, you can't be reclined while you use this. There's some tables at the front that are so much cooler than our seats. I think we'll just try to sit there during the ride because you have a view mm -hmm. straight ahead. I was expecting us to work this whole time, but you know, it can happen. Look at this leg. <laughs> just came around with some free seasickness medication. This is like made for me. Oh, wow. Thank you. Okay, I just want to compare the other seats. Yeah, this feels a lot more spacious. I prefer this. I feel like there's something missing for the lower back though. I'm just trying to justify our seats. <laughs> but you can recline. I think we just pull. A table. Ooh. And I, oh, that's quite a different table. <laughs> oh my god, they have Japanese toilets on the boat. I love how we booked business class, but now all I want to do is just go up on deck. <laughs> Where do we go? Do not open this door, okay? Ah, oh, here it is. Oh, this is so much better than taking a flight. I seriously can't believe that just three hours from now, just by going over the sea, we're gonna be in Korea. It's so crazy. We really should start taking boats and ferries more often. This is awesome. At first when I saw the ferry took three hours and 40 minutes, I was like, what? And now I'm like, no. These islands over here look absolutely incredible. I just want to go there in the summer and spend a day exploring and swimming. So the only other times that we've taken ferries between we ordered mineral water and we got it in a coffee cup. Anyway, so the only other times that we've taken ferries between two countries are first of all <laughs> between Sweden and Denmark. Growing up in Gothenburg, that's something at least I used to do all the time. Then we've also taken a ferry between Helsinki and Tallinn, so between Finland and Estonia. But then the only other time that we've taken a ferry between two non Schengen countries is when we went from Singapore to Indonesia to Batam. So yeah, this is a very rare phenomenon, but I feel like I want to start trying to do it more. This is really cool.
That's when our enthusiasm for the ferry ride started to dwindle. Going back and forth, it's the perfect way to fall asleep. But that's not on the agenda right now. I'm going to have seasickness. God, I stood up for like literally 10 seconds and instantly was just like... Maybe it's good you're sitting here in the front row. I think so. I need to focus on the, on the road. The non-existent room. Literally every person on this boat, or at least in business class, is sleeping. Oscar is about to vomit and I'm just here like, Wee. We both got so seasick and I never get seasick. The waves were absolutely crazy and the winds caused the boat to lean sideways the whole ride. Okay, according to my map, we just passed over into Korean waters. Mm. I love <laughs> how my excitement levels went from here to literally like the bottom of the ocean. I am honestly so excited. <laughs> After approximately two and a half hours of really choppy waters, we finally saw the Korean mountains on the horizon. Oh my god, we made it! And it feels so much better now that we're inside this bay because the boat isn't going up and down. But what a reward! And Busan looks so beautiful and so massive. We had to stay in our seats for a suspiciously long amount of time. I don't know why, but... My brain trying to adjust to Korean. I was like, how do you say hello? After knowing that for years. So yeah, it's gonna take a little while to adjust, but the most interesting thing will be to see the direct contrast between the people. Oh. <laughs> Guys, this is amazing. It's like a soft surface. So it's really easy to pull the bags. It feels so smooth. This is Whoa. so trippy because it really feels like you're not in an airport. So we're gonna try to get a taxi to our hotel. Apparently it's 30 minutes away, but it's supposed to be the main good area to stay. So hopefully it's worth the ride. We're so excited for some Korean food. All right, we got a taxi. Despite living in Korea for four months, we actually never made it to Busan before. So this is our first time. So it's gonna be really exciting to see this other end of Korea. made it to the hotel oh my god we're so hungry we're so starving we're gonna end the vlog here um it's just crazy <clears throat> it's just great wow <clears throat> it's just crazy because we have uh, a sea view now so just looking out over the sea i'm like okay we just came from japan on the other yeah. side of the sea right now and that's crazy but it's so nice to be looking at the sea instead of being on the sea yes because we thought that would be a very easy ride and i never get seasick even i was pretty seasick so. yeah i think the idea yeah. of going between countries on a boat is so romantic and it's so cool but aka you three hours ago yep and now i'm realizing that um there's more to it the reality is very different <laughs> reasons to be an app geek okay on that note thanks for joining us guys it was so fun taking you along on this boat journey we're glad we did it even if it was definitely once in a lifetime yeah <laughs> at I least mean, from fukuoka to yeah. here yeah Exactly. We might do it between other countries, but not, we won't do it here again. But anyway, until we see you in the next video, see, see you around, around the world. world. I'm Oscar. And I'm Dan. And we're on a mission to see as much of the world as possible during our youth. So far, we've traveled to 100 countries to show that anyone can travel off the beaten path regardless of who they are. However, we realized that constantly chasing new countries isn't necessarily the most fulfilling way to live life. So now we're finding a balance by exploring more of our favorite countries and seeing new places at a more sustainable pace. We'd love for you to come along for the ride. See you around the world. <laughs>